Hey everyone, I welcome you all to this MBA 101 tutorial by Simply Learn. In this video, we are going to gauge fundamental knowledge about the Masters of Business Administration degree and its future prospects. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Now, without any further ado, let's get started with the agenda for today's session. We shall begin this session by looking at a few common concerns most of the students have before entering into management domain. After that, we'll look into the details of an executive MBA program. Here, we'll understand what are the benefits of an executive MBA, what is the difference between an executive MBA and a full-time traditional MBA, and what is the eligibility criteria for executive MBA programs. We'll delve over all these topics. And finally, we'll discover career prospects post-MBA degree. I hope I have made myself clear with the agenda. Now let's get started with our first topic, what is MBA? When starting your MBA journey, it is a little embarrassing to ask your friends and colleagues extremely basic questions, right? That is why today we are here to answer a few fundamental questions that may alleviate your concerns about getting an MBA degree. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. The first question we have on our list is, what is an MBA? Well, an MBA or a Master of Business Administration is a graduate degree that provides students with both practical and theoretical training to help them better comprehend business management functions. This postgraduate program is a magnificent asset for budding entrepreneurs and a popular stepping stone to seize your jobs in large corporations. Many Fortune 500 CEOs such as Walmart President and CEO Doug McMullen, Google CEO Sundar Pichai, Microsoft CEO Satya Nandela and Adobe CEO Shantanu Narayan have it on their resumes and the list goes on. Because of that, the MBA is now the world's most popular professional master's degree program. This course will teach you how to manage and grow a business from scratch. Many working professionals use this degree to accelerate and elevate their careers. Hence, if you are looking forward to excelling in your career or willing to change your work domain into a managerial direction, then MBA is an impeccable choice for you. The next question that we have on our list is, why MBA? If you've applied to an MBA program before, then you might be acquainted with this question already, as many schools require applicants to compose a why MBA essay in their cover letters. Furthermore, answering this question is not an easy task if you are just getting started with your MBA journey. So here are some factors that can help you answer this question. The first and most essential outcome of an MBA is better job perspectives. An MBA can help you break through few concrete ceilings to advance up to the corporate ladder. This is one of the most critical reasons for many aspirants to opt for an MBA over the other postgraduate programs. The second advantage that MBA has to offer is career change. If you are currently employed in an executive position and wish to go into management, an MBA degree might be an excellent choice for your future endeavors. The next benefit of an MBA is the opportunity to learn management skills. Apart from the course curriculum, you will find finance clubs, public speaking clubs that can help students gain more intricate abilities. Skills such as leadership, public speaking, negotiations, and conflict management. The last feature of an MBA that we have on our list is the change to build your personal branding. Top ranked B schools have the strong brand identities that can aid in the development of your personal brand. Furthermore, the entrepreneurship strategies adopted by these B schools might help you establish your own firm. So, definitely thinking about an MBA is worthwhile. The third question that we have on our list is which MBA program is right for you? The traditional full-time MBA degree which lasts for one to two years is still a popular option. However, in this modern era of digitization, MBA programs come in all shapes and sizes. 
Presently, business scores offer a variety of MBA programs tailored for diverse student profiles. The traditional full-time MBA is the classic intensive on-campus program designed for students in their early or mid-career. Few top business schools offer executive MBA programs for mid-age professionals with over 2 to 10 years of work experience depending on the criteria of that particular business school. This program will allow you to upskill, network and share expertise by learning from senior professionals. Additionally, it is also entirely conducted in an on-campus mode. So if you are comfortable taking a break from your job, then this is the best option for you. However, if you want to pursue an MBA degree along with your job, you have two options. Distance learning and an extensive online course. Distance learning and an online MBA allows you to combine work and study, which means you don't miss out on your salary and the opportunity of pursuing a full-time program. However, many people choose online MBA over the distance learning MBA since it allows you to learn from the world's finest business schools from the comfort of your own home. The fees for these online courses are really less compared to roof-breaking fees or full-time on-campus courses. Besides that, these online courses enable you to pay per module and plan your own study time. Due to these advantages, there is a lot of buzz around online MBA courses in the education industry. Next up on our list is, which MBA specialization should I go for? The first year of an MBA program is usually dedicated to completing fundamental studies. You will have the option to specialize in one or more areas of business management in the next year. However, many factors will influence your choice of MBA specialization such as market demand, job availability, your preferred job profile, your interest area and the compensation package. We can't tell you which MBA specialization to pursue, but we can surely tell you about the most in-demand MBA disciplines that you should look into. If you think you can sell anything, even a small object like a pen, as effective as the blockbuster movie The Wolf of Wall Street, marketing would be a fantastic area for you to specialize in. In any firm, the marketing department plays a crucial role. They are in charge of boosting revenue, attracting new clients, gaining market share and contributing to its overall growth and profitability. The next famous specialization is an MBA in Human Resources. The Specialization in Human Resources or HR will help you understand how to acquire, manage and retain the workforce within the organization in a systematic and organized manner. It will enable you to manage employees and execute many related activities within the organization such as hiring, training, development and negotiations. Third on our list is finance. Estimates show that finance is the most popular discipline followed by all the others. This specialization will help you comprehend how the financial world operates different economic theories and how these can be applied to solve diverse business problems. This may be the appropriate expertise for you if the sound of money, even if it isn't yours, gives you a thrilling sensation. Fourth on our list is the information technology. The technology is now used in nearly every aspect of the industry. Thus, there is a rising demand for professionals with a combination of business and advanced technical expertise. However, keep in mind that this specialization comes under the MBA degree. Hence, choosing this stream will definitely not make you a technical expert. The last specialization on our list is consulting. It is another popular alternative and for some, a dream getaway. The allure surrounding this profession is largely due to the high-profile employment that provides an excellent salary, advantages and opportunity to travel to new areas. Consultants are hired when outsiders' opinion or expertise is needed to provide solutions for specific challenges faced by the organization. Is an MBA worth it? Is the final question that we have for this video. To answer this question, there are many pros and cons to consider. 
Your decision to opt for an MBA can be heavily influenced by your qualifications, experience and goals. If you are applying for an MBA degree, you may have specific expectations from this stream such as career change or higher compensation band. Due to that, it's challenging to respond to this question with a straightforward yes-no answer. Why? Because you may be an engineer, a doctor or a financial expert. The dynamics are different for each profession. So to understand why you should pursue an MBA, we'll go through a few of its perks. An MBA, especially one from a prestigious business school, will provide you with a slew of benefits. It will assist you in the development of superior and adaptable management abilities. It can also provide you with entrepreneurship skills to get started with your own company from scratch. And not to forget, MBA salaries are some of the highest in the job market. In addition to all this, online MBA courses can make everything much more affordable and convenient. This is why opting for this postgraduate program might not be the unworthy choice for you. So those were the answers to the few most asked fundamental questions about an MBA degree. If you are an experienced professional coping with increased level of stress and looking to launch your career into management roles while your career graph appears to be stalling, an executive MBA can be an excellent choice for you to resolve these concerns. The EMBA program offers a second chance to those who regret not acquiring a full-time MBA early in their career and missing out on all of the fantastic leadership and management roles. So in this video on what is executive MBA, we'll discover what are the benefits of executive MBA, what is the difference between an executive MBA and a traditional full-time MBA, what is the eligibility criteria for EMBA programs. The first topic we have is what is executive MBA program. The standard full-time MBA, which many ambitious young professionals choose, tend to focus on essentials of management. In a conventional MBA program, professionals will be educated for a management professional. And unlike a standard full-time MBA or traditional MBA program, an EMBA focuses on intricacies of the business. It is designed to teach existing leaders how to become more efficient managers. After completing this course, EMBA grads can be chosen for roles such as vice presidents of various departments such as marketing, finance, human resources, technology and many more. Further, if you look at the student profile for both MBA programs, you'll find significant differences. According to the Executive MBA Council, that is EMBAC, the average Executive MBA student is 38 years old and has around 14 years of professional experience, including about 7 years of managerial experience. Since this program is designed for those who are currently working as employees, the EMBA classes typically takes place on weekends and weeknights. The goal of an executive MBA is to help professionals advance their business expertise within the context of their existing professional path. This program provides professionals with management, business and leadership training for bigger and better roles in their current industry. Now moving forward, Let's have a look at few benefits of an executive MBA. Career advancement is the first benefit that we have on our list. The opportunity to set one's career trajectory on fast forward track is one of the most significant benefits of enrolling in an executive MBA program. Those that enroll in such programs are already well known inside their organizations. The typical EMBA applicant is 35 years old. Thus, their experience has quite a substantial age in determining how they wish to structure their career growth. This program fills the voids that are essential to place them in leadership or senior executive positions. The next benefit of an EMBA program is career transformation. The EMBA program can prepare you for challenging managerial roles. If you have been a software engineer for over a decade, and now dreaming of becoming a software project manager in your firm, you can do so through an executive MBA without stopping your routine office work. Furthermore, you can change industries, geography and the nature of work with the post-graduation degree. 
the third and last one on our list is opportunity to begin an entrepreneurship journey. The MBA program focuses on taking business case study challenges on a regular basis to allow students to analyze the positives and negatives of great business models out there. These exercises help professionals find their entrepreneurial spirit. That is why the students of this course end up creating startups with collaborative efforts. Moving forward, we'll look into a few differences between the Executive MBA program and the regular full-time MBA program. The first parameter which differentiates EMBA from full-time MBA is the expected student profile. The Executive MBA is intended for seasoned individuals with extensive work experience who want to advance their careers within the same field. A regular MBA, on the other hand, is for professionals with only a few years of experience who want to enter business management roles or alter their career paths. The average age of student who apply for an EMBA program is 38 years, while the average age for students who apply for standard full-time MBA is 28 years. The next parameter is nature of course. Students in traditional MBA program have to quit their jobs to obtain an MBA degree, whereas the EMBA program allows students to learn on weekends while continuing their jobs. That is why the EMBA program is a preferable option for individuals who do not want to step out from their CSU positions. The next topic is admission selectivity. An EMBA is not as rigorous as full-time MBA. The intake capacity is lower for this course. Additionally, the acceptance standards are less stringent, including low GMAT scores averages being one example. Regular MBA programs, on the other hand, are incredibly competitive with acceptance rates of less than 10%. You need to have very high GMAT score in order to get selected into this MBA program. The last factor on our list is post-MBA aspirations. A full-time MBA is more of a career changer program for young professionals. In contrast, the EMBA program is aimed to develop leaders or vice presidents of particular departments. EMBA graduates are more likely to be promoted and given more responsibilities and furthermore, they are also paid considerably more than the regular MBA graduates because of their extensive past experience. On that note, let's discover the essential prerequisites to be able to get into this EMBA program. Work experience and success throughout the years of employment are the essential criteria for almost all EMBA programs. To select a student for an EMBA program, business schools consider factors such as learning attitude, management experience, leadership potential, desire for the program, and career objectives. For EMBA, hard selection factors such as GMAT, GRE, or candidates' academic record are waived up by B schools. But some top business schools host executive assessments or mini GMATs to measure candidates' preparedness. The documents that are essential for this selection process include resume, EMBA essay, TOEFL score and recommendation letter from your employers. Following the evaluation of your application, the final interview round is held to confirm your competency. The whole interview procedure allows the interview panel to learn about your goals for this EMBA program. So before this round, you must be clear with your agenda for getting into EMBA program. In addition to that, these EMBA programs are deemed to be challenging and you cannot use this program as an excuse to take a break from your office work. Penance, hard work and compromise must be your companions along the road, at least until you plunge to the post-MBA success. One of the main motivations for pursuing an MBA is the drive it gives to a career with handsome salaries. And that's not surprising because when you are spending loads of money, you would be anxious about what you are getting in return besides knowledge. That is why, when you are willing to act for an MBA, you should ask yourself, why do you want to pursue an MBA degree? What are the career prospects after finishing this degree? In contradiction to the popular belief that an individual's career trajectory rises as soon as he has an MBA degree, not many candidates end up working in their dream roles with great compensation packages. Hence. Each individual must have clear objectives and future goals. Only then, they can have a successful career after MBA. 
and precisely that's what we are going to do in this video today. We'll unleash few top career opportunities after an MBA degree for the top 5 specializations. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. The 5 top specializations for which we'll look at different potential career opportunities are Marketing, Finance, Technology, Operations and Human Resources. So let's begin with Marketing. In their good and terrible times, companies require marketing managers. These professionals are the ones who bring customers and increase the overall revenue of an organization. MBA in Marketing focuses on skills such as corporate management, advertising, consumer behavior and brand marketing. An MBA in Marketing can lead to employment in various fields including competitive marketing, business marketing and online marketing. Furthermore, marketing experts can also work in the fast-moving consumer goods sector that is FMCG, advertising firms and IT industry. The few highly paying job titles in marketing are market research analyst, media planner, business development manager, product manager and marketing manager. So let's look at their job descriptions one by one. A market research analyst job description includes devising data collection methods analyzing the data, communicating statistics to the business development team and assisting in evolving the marketing strategies. A media planner is responsible for selecting advertising products to produce a significant number of leads for the client's brand or product. The main objective of a person working as a media planner is to maximize the impact of advertising campaigns through a range of media platforms. Business development managers are responsible for establishing and developing relationships with consumers, suppliers and other business partners to improve and expand company's revenue. The business development manager is also responsible for identifying sales leads, pitching goods or services to new clients and maintaining a good working relationship with enterprise level contacts. The product manager is in charge of both product planning and marketing. This includes managing the product throughout its life cycle, like gathering and prioritizing product and customer needs, creating the product vision, and collaborating with engineers to develop competitive products. The last one is marketing manager. The marketing manager evolves marketing strategy to reach new business heights. These professionals are typically hired to increase the number of clients who buy from the company and improve brand awareness through marketing campaigns. The starting annual salary for a marketing MBA grad in US is $50K and it may go up to $151K depending on the company and role. However, the average salary settles down around $100K. Whereas in India, the average salary for a marketing MBA grad ranges between 5.5 to 20 LPA. Next up is Finance. An MBA in Finance can lead to variety of attractive professional opportunities. It is thought to be the most lucrative and stable employment option. This course covers the financial aspects of a business such as managing, planning, arranging and controlling the company's financial assets. Financial experts research and analyze the economic trends assess corporate reports and take sound financial risk management decisions. Few highly paying job titles in this domain are Risk and Insurance Manager, Financial Analyst, Finance Manager and Accounting Manager. Let's look at their job descriptions one by one. The first one is Risk and Insurance Manager. Risk and Insurance Manager is in charge of identifying the appropriate causes of accidents or losses, designing and implementing preventive measures and devising plans to limit cost and damage in the events of loss, including the acquisition of insurance as well. Next is Financial Analyst. These professionals are in charge of tracking a company's financial performance against a plan. They are also responsible for analyzing business performance and market circumstances to develop projections and assisting senior managers with tactical and strategic choices through quarterly reports. 
The next top paying job roles for MBA in finance is financial manager. Financial managers typical responsibilities include evaluating financial reports, monitoring accounts and generating financial predictions. By doing so, they ensure that the financial strategies stay operational. The last topping job for this specialization on our list is accounting manager. The accounting manager establishes internal controls and guidelines for accounting transactions and budget preparation. He also creates quarterly accounting reports so that the leadership team can analyze the accounting aspects of business. The annual salary for finance MBA grads in USA ranges between $50K to $123.5K. Whereas in India, the starting yearly pay for finance MBA graduate is 5 LPA and depending on the business and responsibility, it may rise up to rupees 20 lakh per annum. The third specialization for which we will discover few top career opportunities is MBA in technology. Many graduate aspirants understand technology. However, there aren't enough people who are knowledgeable about both technology and business. This is where your technical and business expertise comes into play. An MBA in technology can help you break into almost any sector that relies on technology to stay up afloat. Information technology manager, data processing manager, analytics manager and technical program manager are among the top high paying jobs available to technology MBA graduates. Tech managers stay on the top of rapidly changing technology and development trends. They are familiar with the product and services as well as many potential business threats. The MBA in technology also covers the corporate repercussions of developing technologies such as artificial intelligence and cryptocurrencies. However, to become a good candidate, you must have a degree in the technical domain. The annual salaries for this domain ranges between $61K to $146K in US. And in India, a technology MBA grad can earn 6.5 LPA at the beginning of a career. Further, he can scale up this compensation package up to 28 lakhs with years of experience. Next up is Operations. Operation management is the most sought after specialization in the e-commerce, IT and telecommunication industries. Students enrolled in this course will be responsible for not only quality assurance, but also quantity checks of items in the manufacturing unit. An operational manager is in charge of order delivery, fulfillment and returns. This position may require you to work with variety of researchers, engineers and marketing specialists in order to better understand the industry and the targeted audience. While not as glitzy as the other specializations, operations management is gaining popularity amongst B-School applicants. The number of available opportunities in the field has increased, as has the level of competition. Few high paying job titles in the domain are Manufacturing Consultant, Inventory Control Manager, Plant Manager and Logistics Manager. All of these positions are primarily focused on planning, organizing and supervising in the context of production manufacturing or service delivery. The job roles involved in operations also interacts with other functional areas of the company such as legal management information system and public relations. Hence, to become a successful operational manager, you must learn all the aspects of business. The starting annual salary for an operational MBA grad is $49K and it may go up to $134K for the roles like plant and manufacturing manager, depending on the company and location. On the other hand, the salaries for operational MBA grads in India ranges from 8 LPA to 25 LPA. The last specialization on our list is human resources. Aspirants with an MBA in HR can find themselves working as HR executives at any business firm. An HR professional is involved in the process of hiring, training as well as appraising employees of a company. Candidates working in this domain are responsible for tasks associated with organization structure, 
motivations, morals, and ultimate employee management. Now we will have a look at the top job profiles for this domain. First one is human resource manager. The HR manager enhances the organization's human resources by evaluating employee relations and human resource policies of an organization. Next up is the talent acquisition manager. The professional working at this position is supposed to recruit new staff by coordinating the recruitment process. Next on our list is human resource generalist. The professional working at this position ensures company's actions toward corporate social responsibility or CSR. HR generalists can manage the CSR agenda implementation and monitor its adoption proactively. The last one on our list is human resource business partner. The HR business partner's duty is to ensure that human resource policies and procedures are consistent throughout the organization and meet the organization's needs, goals and objectives. Employees are organization's most valuable assets and human resource managers assist firms in keeping their staff engaged with the company. They also concentrate on improving employee performance in order to achieve the organization's goals. As a result, companies are constantly on the lookout for skilled human resource managers. The annual salaries for this domain ranges between $50K to $103K in US. Whereas for Indian HR grads, the salaries reflect in the range of 65 to 17 LPA. If you want to pursue a career in any of these disciplines, then have a look at the job description for all these roles stated in this video and conduct thorough research to determine which role is ideal for you. Conduct in-depth introspection on what you hope to gain from your MBA experience. This will help you launch successful managerial career post MBA degree. With this, we have come to an end to this MBA 101 tutorial. We hope you have found this informative and exciting. If you have enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be appreciated. I wish you all the very best for your MBA journey. Thank you so much for watching the video and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.